Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, Episode 20. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Wells, and this is the podcast designed to help you develop, grow, and overcome the challenges in your life. I'm so happy that you're here with me today. I literally just got back home. We were, we, we meaning Ashley and my wife and myself, were visiting some friends and our godson down in San Antonio, Texas, and we've been back in the house. house uh, sounded Canadian there for a second. Uh, we've been back in the house for less than five minutes, and I was eager to get this podcast ready to go and uh, available for you to hear it. I've got a great guest today. Um, we have Cynthia Sanchez of Oso oh Pinteresting, and she's going to tell us how she went from a full time nurse to a full time business consultant teaching people how to use Pinterest for business. And it's a really cool story. I was pretty inspired by this, uh, by her story. And I know you will be too. But before we get right into that, I had a couple announcements to make. The first one is um, James Kinson of the oh, the Cash Car Convert podcast. It skipped my mind there for half a second. Um, first off, if you haven't listened to James's podcast, the, again, this is a Cash Car Convert, and you can find him at cashcarconvert.com. He is speaking uh, up in Dallas in March, at the beginning of March, and I'm pulling up the dates right now. Um, if you happen to be in the area on... March 4th, it's a Tuesday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. There's a podcast meetup in Dallas. Um, if you go to meetup.com slash podcast dash Dallas slash events. Actually, I'm going to put that in the show notes because it's a little bit of a, a long URL, but it's in Addison. And I'm going to drive up from Austin. I really want to be there to support James. And again, his website is really cool. His podcast is absolutely fantastic. Um, his topic is sell your car, buy a beater. And he kind of piggybacks off of what Dave Ramsey teaches. And something that I personally agree with is that you should be as debt free as you can be or have as little debt as possible and that's how he became up with the cash car convert idea um and i highly encourage you to check out his podcast and again if you're in the addison texas area just north of dallas march 4th 6 30 to 8 30 p.m um, i encourage you to go and hear him talk he's going to be talking about um how to get great interviews for your podcast so i'm going to go and learn from him um i'm also pulling up a review that I got on iTunes. I'm excited to be able to share that one with you as well. Number 17, and it comes to us from Southern Belle Christie. Honestly, I don't think I have know Southern Belle Christie, but Christie, thank you for taking the time to listen and leave a review. She says, very thought-provoking and passionate. I originally started reading Ellery's blog, then recently listened to his podcast. He cares so much and works very hard to put out great material. I, I do work pretty hard, Christy, and thank you for taking notice, and I especially appreciate you taking the time to go over to iTunes and leaving me a, a five-star review and a few words of encouragement. Again, I really appreciate that. If you'd like to do that too, you can go to empoweredpodcast.com slash iTunes. It'll take you right there, and um, you can leave me some feedback on the show. And my final announcement before we head into the interview with Cynthia Sanchez is I'm going to talk a little bit quieter right now so Ashley doesn't hear me through the door, but she's got a birthday coming up. If you would like to tell Ashley hello or tell her what a saint she is, like my friends always do, tell her how much of a saint she is for marrying someone like me, head over to Empowered Podcast dot com slash voicemail and if you want to leave her a voice note i'll let her listen to all of those her birthday's on the 20th so anyway without further delay we'll get right into the interview with cynthia sanchez stick around at the end and i'll give you a taste of what's coming up on our next episode 
Thank you for tuning in to the Empowered Podcast today. I'm here with my friend Cynthia Sanchez of Oh So Pinteresting. How are you doing today, Cynthia? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for inviting me on. I'm really excited about this. Well, I'm excited to have you on too because you're one of the the closest people that I know or the one of the people that I'm closest to, which again, I don't know you all that well, but you are your full-time online business. You're coaching people. You have workshops that you set up. And in the last two years, so fairly recently, you've gone from full-time nurse to full-time, you know, running your own business. And that's exciting to me. And I think a lot of the listeners to the show. And so I'm excited to have you here today. Thanks. So for the people who are not, well, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say for the people who aren't too familiar with Pinterest, but I think that's an increasingly small portion of the population. <laughs> yeah, it definitely but is. Could you tell us a little bit about what you are up to with Oso oh Pinteresting, what you're doing with the workshop, the podcast, and well, let's let's start with that. Sure, sure. Oh so Pinteresting is my online business where I help business owners and bloggers and entrepreneurs utilize Pinterest as a part of their social media marketing strategy. Um, I have a, a weekly, I put out a weekly blog post and I do a weekly podcast episode where I interview people about what they're doing with Pinterest, what they find that's working with them for Pinterest or even what they haven't, you know, had success with. Um, and sometimes I interview people who have developed tools to help, you know, people use Pinterest. Um, and the blog post is kind of more of the, the strategy, the how to kind of the, the, I guess more of the information about what you can do with Pinterest as far as marketing it or some of the features that they have come out with recently. Um, and I've been doing it for almost two years now. Now, I guess I, might be of the type that had kept my head in the sand. I only got into Pinterest about three weeks ago. Honestly, it was after I met you in Dallas, <laughs> um, you know, over that, that that platform university weekend that I really is like, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll dip my my toe in and see what it's like. Yeah. So I guess I'm behind, way behind the times. No, actually not. Um, and Pinterest, even though it's growing at a you know phenomenal rate, is one of the fastest growing websites in history. It reached 10 million users, I think, faster than almost any independent site online. Um, it, there's still a lot of room, and there's still you know you're even joining three weeks ago, you're still a, a pretty early adopter. Um, and Pinterest isn't for everyone, just like LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook isn't for everyone. Not that, you know, and the way I like to, it's not that every business can't use Pinterest in some way or some form. I think every business can use Pinterest unless you're maybe in some really high specialized technological type of business. Um, you pr pretty much most businesses can use it, but does every Pinterest or does every business need a Pinterest account? Not necessarily. Um, and especially for the small business owner, the entrepreneur, if you're just getting started, um, just go with where you're comfortable. If you love Facebook and you're finding great engagement on Facebook, then stick with Facebook or with Twitter or with LinkedIn, whatever works for you, Google Plus. Um, and you know, if Pinterest just doesn't, it just doesn't click with you, well then don't be there because as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you should be where you enjoy and what makes you feel good about your business. Now, the one thing I do recommend is if you do have a blog that goes with your business or products that you sell that you have images of on your business website, that you put a pin it button there. Because even though you may not necessarily enjoy the platform or have, you know, you know, a high interest in it, um, at least offer the people who visit your site, who read your content, the opportunity, give them the opportunity to share that on their Pinterest account. Let them do some of that, you know, word of mouth referral for you. Now, most of what I've done on my website, you know, I have, I have a lot of blog posts. I started very early on, you know, putting the, the image at the top, you know, kind of the teaser thing. And that's really what, that that's really what encompasses most of the images on my site. And a lot of people, uh, who have blogs are doing something similar. Are we making a mistake by not, you know, doing something with a with a cooler picture or a better picture, you know, our face or something like that? <laughs> um, well, you know, as far as images go, the images should really represent your content, the message of your content, as well as they possibly can. Um, and sometimes I come across people, it's like, well, I, I, I blog about SEO. How am I supposed to get an image that represents SEO? You know, it's kind of an abstract concept, you know, not necessarily a physical, tangible 
thing. Um, and there's lots of ways to do that. And uh, images do, you know, have the power of, you know, an image is worth a thousand words, that type of thing. But those images, those words are are left up to the interpretation of the person looking at them and, and their biases and their backgrounds and their experiences and those types of things. So sometimes just even enhancing them a little bit and guiding the person um, by adding a text overlay could really make a huge difference. So let's take the SEO example, you know, in, in this instance. If I were to have a blurry, fuzzy, colorful background of who knows what, I just blurred it out, but if I wrote over it, you know, in, in text, 10 quick ways to up your SEO, then I automatically know what that's about. If I have a picture of a ladder and the arrow and an arrow pointing up the ladder and say the same thing, 10 you know, quick ways to up your SEO, well then I know what that's about. Um, even though it was a picture of a ladder, what does a ladder have to do with SEO? Not much, but it's just that little bit of text that can really make a big difference. If I were just to have the ladder there and the arrow going up, that could be interpreted a lot of different ways. Now, the uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, just came out. Mm -hmm. Have you paid it? Have you looked at that yet? I am in a couple of, I'm a couple of chapters in. Yeah, I've, I've started reading it. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I haven't gotten to the specific social media examples, but one of the ones that he mentioned when he was interviewed by Pat Flynn on his on Pat's uh, podcast was similar to what you were just saying, using graphical images and links and, and that, that kind of thing. And I'm starting to do that uh, on my Pinterest page and Facebook and LinkedIn, and I'm really feeling, um, or, or at least trying to do my very best, but I, I think a lot of people could benefit from you know, the, some of the things that you're talking about, what Gary's talking about in his book of just, you know, being picture based. Uh, so it's it's a visual medium instead of text. And so yeah. I, I like the way it's going. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, funny that you mentioned that. And, and I'm kind of getting a presentation together that I have to give next week and kind of thinking about that. It's more about the visual web and the evolution of the visual web and how Pinterest has played a role in that. And if you think about it, when, you know, we first kind of, if we kind of take things back and look at the, you know, in historical terms and look at things big picture wise, um, when we first started, you know, kind of having print publications, it's all it was, it was just text. You know, when the first books were written, it was just text because it was too hard to get the artwork in there. Um, but then, then things started to evolve. Same things with the first newspapers, mainly just text. But then, you know, I know you're probably way too young to remember this. Um, but when USA Today came out and launched as a newspaper, and the thing that I remember it, I was I was really young. I was like a toddler. OK, I'm not that old. But uh, when USA Today launched, um, the thing that stood out about it that I kind of remember is that it was they had this huge, huge, gorgeous picture, color picture on the front where you, newspapers would have, you know, have images, you know, and pictures in there. But they would be kind of just these little small things, little blurbs here and there, unless, you know, there was some huge major ca catastrophic event. Then you would see, you know, the huge picture up front. Um, but most of the space was dedicated to the text, to the news. But more and more, it kind of evolved that pictures played an important role. Same thing that we're having, you know, with our phones, where before it was, we were just happy to be able to send text messages. Now we want to play video and we want to watch things and we want to see things on these screens. And the screens got smaller and then they got bigger. And now the screens on our phones are getting even bigger. Same thing with our TVs. The screens continue to get bigger. People want to see things. They don't just necessarily want to read things. You can get so much more information and really connect with the information on a much deeper level than you can if you just read about it. Now, I, I want to back up a little bit to maybe it was in 2011, 2010 or so when you were still a, an on was an on oncology nurse. Yes. Is that what I read? Uh -huh, an oncology nurse. And Pinterest comes out and you, you did then like what I'm doing now, you stuck a, a toe in and then you realized how cool it was and got really into it. Can you walk me through the process of become, of being a nurse, getting your first customer asking you to help them out with Pinterest for business and then going full time? Sure. Um, just like you mentioned, um, I dipped my toe in a Pinterest actually reluctantly. My mom at that time invited me to Pinterest. There was a while there where you had to get an invitation to join. 
Um, and she sent me invitation after invitation. Like, I don't have time for that. I, you know, I was busy. I was working with kids, you know, and it, it just it just didn't really fit in. And then one day I looked at it and then it just took everything over. It was changing the way that I prepared meals, what we ate, um, projects done around the house, things I bought. I just had a huge impact on my life. And it was about the same time that I came across Pat Flynn's podcast. And it happened, the very first episode I listened to happened to be with him and Cliff Ravenscraft. Um, and so I heard about podcasting and I heard about online business and I heard about passive income. It's like, whoa, what do you mean I can have a business and I don't need to open up a storefront and have inventory and all these big, scary legal things and, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is that really possible? Um, and you know, I listened to, I listened to actually every single episode that, um, that Pat had out at that time. And I think at that time he was up to maybe episode number 30 or 40. And now mm -hmm. he's like up to episode number 80. So I listened to every single one and um, kind of took in all that I could and decided, okay, I can, let's give this a try, but let's, let's figure this out. Let's, let's, you know, kind of see what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to start a blog. Well, what am I going to blog about? My kids are older and, you know, I knew a lot of lifestyle and, and parenting bloggers who are writing about their kids and experiences raising kids. And my kids are way too old for that. They don't want me talking about them. And honestly, you know, we're kind of a boring family. We really don't do much. Um, so what am I going to write about? And I had just really gotten into Pinterest. It's like, well, I'll write about Pinterest and I'll talk about what I am doing with Pinterest and, and how I'm doing it. And I'll learn about WordPress and and, you know, all this online stuff. And, and you know, I was kind of um, mistaken, I guess, when I first thought about it. I thought it was going to be easy because I had read tons of these, you know, parenting blogs and decorating and design blogs and, you know, recipe blogs and, and realized that, you know, these people weren't IT, you know, professionals. They weren't astrophysicists. They weren't, you know, these huge, you know, they, they weren't, they were, they were normal people and they were able to do this. Like, well, they can do it. I can do it. But there was a huge learning curve at the beginning, and it took a while for me to really get, you know, comfortable with WordPress, and I'm still stumbling my way around through it. But uh, um, so I got that figured out, figured out how to do the pictures and the links and, you know, all this kind of stuff, and um, was really focusing on the projects and the recipes. And then I started um, interviewing people, other bloggers, to kind of help spread the word about my blog and to kind of shine a light on what they had done with things that they had been inspired to do by Pinterest. And that's where my tagline came from. It's uh, don't just pin it, do it. Um, and I found that I definitely <laughs> like that. I think that's, <laughs> Thanks. I heard that on, I started listening to your podcast and as a side note, you know, you, you, you pin a lot of things, but you don't do it. Organizing, uh, organizing the closet or making this fancy meal. And I love your tagline, by the way, don't just pin it do it. I think that's, that's pretty important. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You know, we have all, we have all of this information, you know, at our fingertips in our pockets now and, you know, lives can be enriched by it and you can experience so many new things. I mean, it, it, it may just be as simple as trying a new recipe, but that's a new experience. You know, you may not go on a world round, you know, around the world vacation or anything like that, but you could, who knows, just do something, step out of your comfort zone. That's kind of what the intent of the blog was, um, you know, in the beginning. And, you know, a little motivational, a little inspirational, but mainly focused on the project. And um, I had been going along with that and talking to different bloggers, people that I knew who were trying things. And uh, one of the posts that I wrote was about me using Pinterest to get a new haircut. Um, so I took my, you know, Pinterest or my, I opened up my Pinterest app on my phone while I was getting my haircut, showed the stylist, you know, kind of the styles that I was looking for. And I had people take pictures of us while, you know, I was getting my haircut and I wrote about it. And, um, I know the salon owner and I said, Hey, would you mind if I left some business cards here? Cause they help promote other local businesses in the area. And they said, sure. Well, a couple of weeks later, uh, a local business contacted me and said, Hey, we found your card about Pinterest. We have a new business. Will you help us with our social media? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, and it's like the Pinterest is just for fun, and you know. So I went and talked to to them about it and and learned more about their business. And they were new into this whole new um, side of their business. They you know had both had you know jobs and they were kind of venturing out into something new. And um, you know it was like we need help. Can you help us? And it's like you want to hire me? You want to pay me? Now realize that I am a nurse and I do this and this is what I do. It's like yeah, but we like you and we like what you're doing and you know we we I know you know so we just we both took a leap of faith and um, they hired me and I 
just, you know, I found a, you know, social media course to take and I read everything I could online about social media and using it for marketing and, and, um, you know, kind of look differently at Pinterest at what had been working for me and what had been working for other businesses and, you know, that type of thing. Um, and they were my first client. What kind of, or can you, are you allowed to tell us what kind of business that was? Yeah, they're in the sports apparel industry. Sports. Mm -hmm. And how did you find out or figure out or determine how much to, to charge them? You've got. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a huge challenge. And, um, I, you know, as you know, being a nurse, you know, all those, you just kind of punch the clock and there's your paycheck and you know what the average rate for, you know, a nurse that does this is and, and that's it, you know, it wasn't never really this pricing strategy. So that was definitely something I've had to learn. Um, I talked to other people in, you know, that were already doing this and what their rates were and what they did and how much they did for that. I took a look at how much time it was going to take me and, and what they expected and, and, um, and then also kept in mind my, you know, my experience level, you know, and, and that type of thing. And then, you know, came up with a pricing structure that we both agreed on and, and, you know, we're good. Um, and, uh, one of the courses I had taken really helped a lot and some advice that I gotten from other people as far as where to find contracts and, and that type of thing. And we already did my, uh, my husband and I had an, and had a corporation set up already. So we had kind of the S corp set up. We had our tax ID number. We already had that big business stuff taken care of with something that he had done previously. Um, so that part was already in, 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 in place. And then we just added my business as a part of that. Um, but it was still the other kind of fine details. And, you know, even then, mm -hmm. even to today, those things are still kind of working themselves out as I add new products and services uh, to my business. Um, so that's that's kind of how it all got launched. And then I added another client and looked more at just doing overall social media community management as a business. Um, but that's not really where my heart lies. I do it for a few companies and for a few clients. Um, but that's I, I enjoy it and I like being able to give them a lot of attention, but to just kind of just build on scale with that and maybe hire, you know, somebody else and build a team of social media community managers isn't really the direction that I wanted to go. I really enjoy engaging with people and talking and I, you know, I, I started public speaking and, um, you know, I really enjoy that and the podcast and, and really interacting one on one. And I really like staying really specific and focused on Pinterest. I think that really has helped me to kind of stand out in a way. I would, I would definitely agree on that first customer. Did you now, if I'm, I'm getting a little too nosy, let me know. Cause I, <laughs> these are things that I want to know the answer to because I'm a couple years behind you. And I know I've talked to at least a dozen people who are wanting to head your direction. Did you charge hourly or per project with that first one? For them, I had a monthly base fee, and then above and beyond that, then there was additional charges for things that went beyond that. If they okay. wanted more, they needed more. Okay. So this first customer, they saw the business card in the hair salon and contacted you. How did you get the second customer? Uh, the second one came from a referral. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. As I guess as long as we get the first one, leverage that to get the second mm -hmm. one. Because I, I was actually on the phone with uh, a friend of mine, let's see, today's Friday, it was two or three days ago, and we were both discussing with each other how to get the first the first one, mm -hmm. and then how to get that, you know, moving into the second one and, and things like that. So now... Yeah, and before we kind of move on, I, I kind of want to say something about that a little bit. Now, remember okay. when I was starting my blog, this the, it really wasn't intended to be a business based on Pinterest. Um, when I first started it, it was, this was supposed to be like the learning platform for me and to figure out how to do all this blogging and online stuff. And then I was going to go and develop the quote unquote real business. So when they approached me, I wasn't prepared in a lot of ways. And I really wish I was, you know, uh, you know, and had more of a plan and had more of a structure and that type of thing. So if you really already have that idea in mind, then there's a lot of different ways that you could go about getting that first client. Um, and you know, it, this just kind of happened to, to happen, you know, when I put that, that business card out there, I just, I wasn't sure. I just really wanted more readers. I wanted, you know, to, to build up my readership on my blog. Any suggestions that you would have that, that has worked maybe not for the first one or two, uh, customers, but maybe 
number 10, 11, 15, 17. Yeah. Uh, the best thing that has really helped with my business lately. And I, you know, if I, if I'd have had more of that structure in place, I really would have started this sooner, um, is, is really getting out there and, and putting, being okay. Consistent in your content was, is I think is huge because as my blog is out there more and you know, the, it kind of tends to grow and builds, you know, a bigger place online. Um, as my social networks start to grow, you know, that's kind of giving me more, you know, exposure to different people. And the podcast has made a huge difference and getting on other people's podcasts has made a huge difference. You know, I, I, there's times where, oh, I heard you on this podcast and that's how people know about me. Um, they wouldn't have found out about me if I hadn't been on other people's podcasts. Um, being on social media examiner podcast, you know, being interviewed by Michael Stelzner has been huge, huge. And the reason he interviewed me was because I had a podcast, you know, and, and somebody recommended me to him. Um, so it's, you know, really getting out there, being engaged, being involved, going to events. It's, it's hard to build a business if all you're going to do is kind of stay within your four walls and not really get out there. And I, I know you're getting out there, so I'm sure you're not going to have any problem at all. I'm trying. <laughs> awesome. So you've been doing this as a, a full-time Pinterest business consulting for what, a year or so now? Yeah, just a little over a year. Mm-hmm. So what's what's next for you? I know you were talking about the the speaking. I know you're speaking at New Media Expo here in a couple of weeks, which I will be there. And my wife's coming with me, so awesome. it, one or one of the two of us will definitely be in yours. I think we might try to divide and conquer and <laughs> get as much content as possible. My husband and I do the same thing. Well, she was the, she was looking at. We we both like museums and those kinds of things, and she was looking at getting a. a pass for Vegas where she could go to certain museums and the history of that and whatever. I was like, what if you got a, a content creator pass with me? And, and that's, that's end up, ended up being what we did. So I'm really, really excited about that. Like I said, one, one of us, if not both of us, will be there listening to you in, in Vegas. Well, great. I'm looking forward to it. And I also noticed that you did, uh, you spoke at FinCon and you've got a couple other things. Uh, w what else have you got going? Yeah. What else have you got going? Sure. Um, just in the, actually next week I'll be speaking at Dallas Digital Summit, which I'm really excited about that. Steve Wozniak is going to be there and, you know, getting to meet one of the co-creators wow. of Apple is going to be exciting. I um, mean, I'm really yeah. honored to be speaking at the same event that he is. I'm actually going to be doing a workshop the day before the main conference, and that's super exciting. And and it's in my local area, yay! So that's fun. Um, and then uh, I'm kind of getting things arranged right now that I'll be speaking in Winnipeg, Canada, um, here in January. Now I'm not sure about going to Winnipeg Bring in January. I'm going to have to get a big <laughs> coat for that one, but that's going to be exciting. No yeah. Um, and then in March, I will be in San Diego for the social media marketing world, um, social media examiners, um, conference, live conference that they're doing now. Um, and I'll have two sessions there, one about Pinterest and then I'll be moderating a panel. Did you reach out to them and submit something? Hey, this is what I would talk about. Or did they find you through the podcast and the blog and say, we want, we want you to come talk to us. Uh, the second way. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yes. And I'm very touched and I'm very honored. And I'm, you know, I just, I just can't believe, you know, what's, what's been happening, you know. Now, do you think that that's not, not to detract at all from, from the content or the personality at all? Cause I think all of those are great, but do you think it's because you are very niche? I think that has a role to play in it. You know, um, there are other people who write about Pinterest, who teach Pinterest, um, but as far as I know, I'm still the only one that podcasts about Pinterest. Um, huh. and those other people also do other things as well. Um, they also have other projects or businesses that they do as well. Um, most of them, the, at least the ones that I've come across so far. Um, and, but I'm, I'm focused on Pinterest, um, you know, especially, you know, when it comes to the services and, and things that I offer, um, you know, there are a couple of clients that I've had from the beginning that I do manage their Facebook and, and things like that. But, um, but really it is, it is 
niche to Pinterest. And, you know, when it comes to social media, things just change so quickly. Um, Facebook is just a huge beast to try to figure out their ad system and, you know, their, you know, edge rank and, and what you can and can't do and image sizes. I mean, they change the rules constantly and to keep up with Facebook and, you know, and, and the nuances of LinkedIn and, and YouTube and what ranks better and what, wor- you know, what doesn't really work well, you know, when it comes to videos and, and all that kind of stuff. It, I just don't see how it's possible for one person to be an expert in all of social media. Um, and, and, you know, maybe I'm just limited in, in, in what I can do, but for me, um, I, I enjoyed Pinterest first as a user of Pinterest and, and fell in love with it that way and saw what an impact it had on my life and then saw the potential of traffic generation for bloggers and small business owners and, you know, or even, you know, huge corporate brands, um, how they could use Pinterest and, you know, overall, I, I just find it attractive. Um, and that's why I decided just to focus on Pinterest. Yeah, I think you're kind of the go-to person for Pinterest. You know, I we I talked about meeting you at the beginning of November here in 2013, but I had stumbled upon your website uh in May or June. I don't even know how. <laughs> obviously, you know, but I I, don't know, I might have googled Pinterest or or something like mm-hmm. that and and found it, but I I think that's um that's pretty cool. You're you are, in my opinion, the go-to person for Pinterest. Well, so you. I'm glad you've you've niched on that and quite honestly seem to be uh, the expert. Thanks. Now, if you if you want to, you can do a little plug. But I wanted to talk some about the workshop that you've going. You know, you had you had li- you had limited the size, so you get the personal touch with everybody, mm-hmm. and it sold out extremely fast. Mm-hmm. And you're going to open it up again in a couple months. Can you tell us? Um, for the listeners who may want to attend what the workshop is about, and then for the solopreneurs, the entrepreneurs who want to be where you are, maybe how you started it, how you got the confidence to say, hey, what I have is worth charging for and telling people about. Can you walk us through that process on, on both sides? Sure, sure. Uh, one thing, you know, I mean, just be kind of, you know, how I've kind of told you this, this business didn't really, it kind of found me in a sense. Um, and I really didn't have everything planned out and structured and I didn't really start it, you know, even taking on that first client start, you know, even then I wasn't sure that, or even had considered that I would become the Pinterest expert. I mean, that just kind of came or, or a Pinterest expert, you know, um, or something like that. It just kind of happened to evolve that way. Um, but as you know, the content has increased on my site as, you know, I've gained more clients as I've done more one-on-one trainings. I do, uh, help clients, you know, on a one-on-one basis and walk them step by step from start to beginning on how to build a Pinterest strategy and how to implement it and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, I kind of had got that under my belt. I worked with some bigger clients um, in, in, on bigger accounts and that type of thing. And, you know, I needed to add different services. And I considered doing a video course. And I made a really small video course that's actually my, my freebie that I give away with uh, the email opt-in. Um, and it's just about getting your Pinterest account profile set up. And, um, it's, you know, it walks you step by step from profile picture to what your, your account description to be, should be and all that kind of stuff. It's just a little mini course and I gave it away for free and I thought, okay, well giving it away for free, it should have tons of downloads. You know, I mean, who doesn't like stuff for free and, and that kind of thing. And, and it has built my email list, but when I go back and look at the, the data on the videos, it hasn't really been watched or engaged with very much. Um, and that was pretty disappointing. Um, you know, when, and when I want to, when I'm going to put all that time and effort and energy into creating something that I want to help people with, and then it's not really used, then it's like, I, you know, how, how much of, you know, was that really a good use of my time? And is that the best way that I can serve them? Um, so I've kind of had a little bit of hesitation about making a video course um, because of that. It's like, well, what else can I do? And it's actually, I kind of, you know, was inspired by Cliff Ravenscraft and his approach to his podcasting courses. And they are kind of live six week sessions, um, you know, and really intense in depth podcasting courses. Like, well, I don't need to go six weeks with Pinterest, but how about three weeks? And uh, so my sessions are, are three weeks. They're one and a half hour sessions once a week. Um, and they're live, they're interactive. 
um, and they happen on certain times at, you know, on certain days. And in this first session, I didn't offer video recordings. I really wanted to get people involved and I wanted to get to know them and really wanted to provide as much value and as much service as I could to really help them get established on Pinterest and answer all of their questions and, and help them know things that they didn't even know to ask. You know, I wanted to just give it all away there. Um, and they got access to a private Facebook group and access to me through email as much as they wanted for three months. I've even done separate calls with them um, just because I really want to give them great value because I knew then if they were live and interactive in the course of that, they would get something out of it. Now, it was still up to them to go implement it. You know, I can't control that, but at least I know that they were able to consume it. And my time and my energy put into creating that course, all the, the research and, you know, all the stuff that I brought together for the course and the time spent with them, at least I knew somebody was was able to, to consume it, not where in the video way it would be, yeah, I would sell it and maybe they would or they wouldn't watch it. Um, and I just felt a lot better about that and offering that type of service in the video course. Um, and it, it isn't really a beginner level course. You have to kind of know what a pin is and and what a board is and, and that type of stuff. It's more of kind of an intermediate to somewhat advanced course. Um, and it really depends, you know, I think I'll have to adjust it depending on the group of people that attend. And, I, and you know, I knew that there was going to be varying levels. Uh, one of the person or one of the people that took my course was actually one of the first hundred users of Pinterest. She was in the very, wow. yeah, she was there in the wow. very beginning. And Talk about early adoption. Exactly. <laughs> and her husband had, you know, sold something to Pinterest and it was really involved in the technology of Pinterest when it first started. Yeah. And she took my course and it was, it was actually a big honor to have her there. Um, and she, you know, she was able to get a lot out of it and I was able to help her. But then I also had people who had yet, who had just launched their Pinterest account. So I had varying ranges of, of skill levels in there, but I think they all got, you know, a lot out of it and had the opportunity to ask their questions and get their, their needs met as related, you know, to Pinterest and their business. Um, and that's what I hope to repeat again, um, next year. You plan on doing one class a year or two or three? Um, it's going to be more often. Uh, right now, the speaking schedule is a little bit up at the air. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to start it. And I know New Media Expo is going to be amazing and exhausting. Um, so I want to make sure I'm well rested and well prepared for that. So it may start at the begin, you know, at the um, middle of January, if not the beginning of February. So being on the Empowered podcast, you might have guessed that we would talk about the word empower and what it means to you and in your business. So what does the word empower mean to you? Well, I think that that can come in internally or externally. Um, I think sometimes, you know, we we kind of doubt the things that we're capable of and let those fears and inhibitions and things keep us from doing a lot. Um, when I, you know, you kind of asked me this, and I don't think I really answered it about, you know, launching the course. Um, it was, it was a little scary. You know, what if I put this out there and nobody wants it? What if I, you know, do this and, you know, what if it's the same thing, you know, as, as kind of the videos and I don't get the engagement that I want? Um, is it really, you know, and I kind of, you know, and it's been something I've had to overcome throughout this whole business process. What if I make my podcast and nobody ever downloads it? You know, um, you know, we're always afraid of being judged by people. Um, but, you know, I think I've seen, especially having kids, you know, that are now, well, some of them are college age and, and high school age, them going through high school and you kind of take a look back and think about yourself in high school. It's like, you know, all that stuff that I worried about did not matter. Did it really matter that I wore those shoes or those pants or, you know, all those, you know, high school type of judgments that come up that we, you know, stress so much about when we're going through it and you realize how much it does, it doesn't really matter. And this is the same thing now. I mean, if nobody ever listened to my podcast except for five people, well, then those five people were the ones that I was meant to go help um, or serve or, you know, really bring some value to. Um, and, and, that should, and then that's enough. And if it's not enough for me, well, then maybe I, I, I change things or whatever. But at least I got something out there and, do, you know, that empowered me to do other things. It did empower me to go, you know, speak in public. Um, and then sometimes I think empowerment comes externally, you know, sometimes, you know, if, if I didn't have the support of my family and my husband to, to do this, I would not be able to do this. Having their support means a lot to me, their encouragement, um, and knowing that they're behind me and understand that sometimes I can't 
do things at the time that they need me to or want me to. And they may have to wait a little while. Like right now I'm recording this podcast. I can't be out playing with the kids in the snow and that's okay. They really don't want me there anyway. But, uh, you know, they, you know, it's, it's, but their understanding of that has empowered me to do this. So I think it comes from, you know, lots of different sources. So what you're saying is I'm keeping you from hanging out with the family. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Uh, because I am not a big fan of playing out in the ice and snow anyway. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Cynthia, what's the, what's the best way to empower other people? Oh, the best way to empower other people. Um, I, you know, I guess it's, it's just really treating them how you would want to be treated, really being a friend and being honest. Um, you know, there's a, a, you know, sometimes I'll send, there's a friend of mine and she's in Boston and I actually met her online through this Pinterest blog and, you know, we become great friends and I sent her something that I had an idea about and she was honest enough to say, you know what? Yeah, that just doesn't fly or, you know, yeah, that's a great idea or what about this? And I know that I can trust her to give me, you know, a really honest opinion and that gives me you know, and, and sometimes I agree and sometimes I don't, you know, and sometimes I go ahead and do what I thought was the good idea to begin with. But I know I can count on her to really be honest and open with me and having that honesty with her, you know, and I can do the same for her. And we know that our, our we don't have to kind of be too sensitive, you know, and kind of not be completely honest and just say, oh, yeah, that's nice, because that isn't really helpful. Um, and you know, sometimes it, it's not what I want to hear, but it's what I need to hear. And that, that for me is empowering is just really to be honest and open and, and really have what's, you know, the best intentions for them. And if I can ask a, maybe a more personal question here, how, how has being a female in this space been a challenge for you? Because you had mentioned that you try you try to make it more gender neutral and not too girly or cutesy, I think is what you said. Mm -hmm. Has being a female in this space been a challenge or is the, have you found that it's been more maybe in your head? I don't know. Um, I think maybe it is a little bit more in my head. Um, when I first started, you know, and, and I think that kind of has to do with my experiences in the past. Um, being a nurse, you're kind of, you kind of, people get these, when you say the word nurse to most people, you kind of get this vision of what they do. I mean, who they mm -hmm. are and the role they mm -hmm. play. Um, and, you know, so you kind of have those cultural influences. And then actually your position within the hospital or the clinic, you know, it is the doctor that, you know, is always, you know, kind of has the last word. Um, and, you know, and, and then there's there's just a lot of ways that, you know, I kind of had I brought all that with me. Um, so the first conference I went to and, and starting out the blog, I knew I had a couple of different routes to go. I could go to more the lifestyle parenting type of blogger conference and the more female centric conference like blog her or, you know, those big conferences for, for that type of, of blogger and business owner. Or then I also, you know, being exposed to Pat and Cliff so early on, I could go to blog world at that. That's what it was called at that time. And it's like, well, they're the ones that got me started. It's their, their influence and, and their experiences that, that kind of have guided me throughout this. Why would, you know, I think I want to go that route. Um, and I want to go see what, what they're all about. But it was really intimidating because I knew it was going to be, you know, looking at, you know, at that time, Blog World's, you know, at the conference, you know, site, it was primarily men speaking or women that had all these years of experience and, you know, the field that they had been, you know, they had been in and, you know, and were speaking about, it's like, am I going to really belong there? It's like, they're going to look at me and it's like, stupid woman, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Go back to, you know, talking about your girly stuff. And that was so not the right or way to think about it. When I got there, I met so many open and nice and supportive and helpful people. Um, and that was at Blog World in New York in June of 2012 and had such a great experience that when they and, you know, kind of talked about tickets being on sale for the next one just six months later in Las Vegas, January 2013, my husband, my husband went with me. He went there for support. <laughs> you know, we, we kind of try to do as much of this as we can together. And um, it was actually our 20th wedding anniversary and we celebrated it at Blog World. How romantic is that? <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. but, uh, he went with me and, you know, we kind of split up and he went to sessions and I went to sessions so we can kind of talk about it and get the most that we could out of it. And, but when they announced the next ones, like we're going and, you know, so we just decided then and there because it was such a great and positive experience. And, and, you know, and now I, you know, I have the honor and the privilege to be able to speak there again, you know, just a year later after that one. So when you decided 
to transition from nurse to Pinterester or whatever the verb of that is. <laughs> what types of resistance did you face? Um, the biggest one was, you know, my own self-doubt. You know, should I do this? Is this the right decision? You know, I'm leaving this career where I know it's stable. I know that, you know, if I wanted to advance, I could go back to school. I can go into management. I have all these options, you know, that I could do, you know, in nursing. And, you know, it was, it, you know, I went to nursing school after I had my kids. And, um, you know, that was a lot of time. That was a lot of money invested into that. Is, is it fair to them? Is it fair to me to, to give it all up? Am I making the right choice? Um, but also on the flip side of that, I knew as a nurse that I could keep my license and that I could go back to work in that field if I wanted to. Um, so that is a little bit of insurance there as opposed to being in, you know, another type of job where if you leave it for six months, you know, forget it, you can't get back in. Um, Do you still have it? I'm sorry? Do you still have your nursing license? Yes, yes. And I will always have my nursing license. That is something I will never, ever, ever give up. Um, okay. And, um, you know, so I had that and, 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 you know, there were times even after I left my job, um, you know, people at my job, are you sure, is, are you sure, is this what you really want to do? You know, most businesses fail, you know, you know, it, it's not a sure thing. And it's a lot of encouragement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I know they were just kind of looking out for me, you know, and you know, people are afraid of change and sometimes doing these risky things, you know, it's scary. Um, and then, you know, family members, you know, I, you know, some said, you know, oh, well, you know, that's the silliest thing you could do. You had a stable career. Why would you give that up? And, you know, this isn't a sure thing. And, you know, you know, it, you know, some negativity from them as well. And I just, I, I've kind of always been a little bit of, you know, different from most of my family. <laughs> and, you know, there's times that I've done things or have enjoyed things or tried things or been to places that they didn't necessarily relate to. And this is just another one of those things. Um, it was, you know, what really had to happen was that, you know, my husband and my kids and, you know, my family, you know, really understood and supported me. And, and that was what was most important. Now, this may be a different answer for you because your first customer, first client uh, kind of approached you. But what challenges did you have to overcome when you first started out? Um, yeah, I mean, and, and that's still a challenge, you know, selling is, is, you know, I'm not a natural born salesperson. That is, is, is not me. I don't like being pushy. I like, um, you know, or trying or having to convince someone that they should purchase something for me or hire me or something like that. Um, I, I did have a sales job for a really short time before I became a nurse and I just, I didn't enjoy it. You know, that's just not, uh, you know, I want to, if, if I knew that there was something else that could be done, um, you know, and get it, you know, being the mom of four kids, you have to do things on a budget, you know, and you have to look for the best deal. And, you know, if I can give you a better deal, then great, you should buy from me. If I could really give you good value for whatever it is that, you know, you know, that, um, I have to sell, then you should buy for me. But if, if you could do somewhere else and I still try to sell you, I, I don't feel good about that. Um, and, you know, still the money issue is, is a little bit of a challenge. One of the, the worst parts, you know, or the parts that I didn't, uh, that I enjoyed the least, I guess, about the nursing part was the billing, was the, the financial aspect. There were times, and, and this was, you know, hard for me where we would have to refuse care because a patient couldn't afford it. And I, I just, I had a really, really hard time with that. You know, I mean, I want to do as much as I can for as many people as I can. Um, and when it comes to, you know, people with cancer and, you know, dealing with such a, you know, huge life altering situation, the last thing you want to hear is, well, you just can't afford it. So I can't take care of you. You know, that's, that's just not someplace that, you know, I wanted to, that I, that I enjoy being. Um, but you know, so it's, it's still a learning process and I'm still figuring out, I'm still price, you know, trying to figure out pricing strategies and what's fair, you know, to the, the person that's buying it, what's fair to me, um, you know, in, in having to, you know, pay the bills and, and raise a family and, and for my time and for my effort. Um, so it's, it's still learning. Any tips on how to be better at sales when you hate sales? Um, I, I, you know, I'm kind of looking at that and, and I have been a little bit more in the last, especially the last few podcast episodes, you know, I'm talking about my, my public speaking a little bit more and, and I know that I have to, if I don't tell people about it, how do they know that to buy it? And, you know, yeah. so I, I at least need to have it out there and, and I'm really looking at my services page and I know that needs to be overhauled. 
And I know that I need to be more clear on that. And that is definitely something I want to get done, you know, by the end of this year, if not the beginning of next year. And, it, you know, I think I'm kind of getting to the point where I want to get maybe more of a business coach to help me with those things, because I think it's next to impossible to know all sides of a business. Um, and you need to ask for help. You know, I expect people to ask me for help when it comes to social media and Pinterest. I need to ask for help when it comes to pricing structures and sales copy and, you know, and, and different strategies, you know, on the business side of things. I know Pinterest, but I may not, you know, I, I don't know all the ins and outs, the, you know, the best ways or the, you know, better ways to do things as far as the business goes. Yeah. And after having been in sales myself about 12 years in, um, I manage about a 15 to $18 million business for a pretty big IT company and having sales experience for that long and that much business, it's still, when it comes to my own products, a challenge to, to figure out what, what to ask people to pay for. I've sold some of my toolkits at, uh, when I first launched it, like $7, I sold uh, at a $29 price point. And it's always, it's different when it's your own product. You know, if it's a computer or a haircut or a, a widget, you can say, well, the one on the shelf over here is 10 bucks. Mine should be nine or 10 or 11, you know, in comparison. So I'm with you on that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard to know. And, and there really isn't, I don't think, you know, that hard and fast rule that this is the right way or that's the wrong way. I mean, because, you know, no matter what industry or, or, or service you're in, I mean, you bring up haircuts, you know, and you have your $7 haircuts and then you have your $100 haircuts. Really, what's the difference? You know, you could have a talented person cut your hair for $7. You could have a, you know, a, a not so talented person cut your hair for $100. And, and where, where did they come up with these prices and how does it all work out and what comes with that and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's still a challenge, but I think it is also having confidence in yourself and the value and you know what this can bring to people. Um, and, um, and, and, and just kind of getting over that and, and really valuing what you have to offer and, and, and what it does and, and what it can do. Um, and, and just kind of sticking with it. And then if, if, you know, if it, if it's not selling, you know, I guess the, the things that I'm reading, the books that I've been reading lately is, well, maybe go back and look at it. Do you need to increase its value in some sort, or do you just need to come down on the price? Since you've gone full time as uh, with with Oso Pinterest, has there been anything that you used to do that you've had to stop doing? <laughs> so so much, um, yeah. Uh, you know, and and for the longest time, you know, when I first started blogging, it, it took everything. You know, it took me forever to write a blog post. I mean, eight ten hours to write, you know, a six hundred word blog post. Um, because I'm not a writer and I hadn't really written since, you know, college and the college writing, you know, the, the term paper research writing um, isn't really what you want to read on a blog. And if you go back, my first blog posts are up there and they are awful. They are awful um, and they're boring and the pictures are awful. And I knew that they were awful. I knew I had to get better. <laughs> so I did, you know, there was a long time that I didn't watch TV. I didn't, yeah. you know, I, you know, I made cookies last night and I have not made cookies in probably a year. Um, and I used to bake all the time. Um, Starve the doubts, not the children. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and so there's a lot of things, a lot of the personal interests, I guess a lot of my hobbies have kind of, kind of gone to the wayside. This is now my hobby, my passion, my business, and I enjoy it. I have fun. Um, uh, I got into, I, I really love paper crafting. And um, kind of one of my little geeky, nerdy hobbies there. And I don't do it anymore. The last paper craft thing that I did was months and months ago. And, you know, handmade cards and, you know, all these kind of intricate cutting things and, and things like that. And I just, I haven't done it. Um, but I think it'll pay off. And I think, you know, kind of as, you know, Pat Flynn's model says, you know, work really hard now. And then and maybe a little bit later, you won't have to work quite as much. <laughs> I think it'll be a nonstop yeah. process to be a business owner and always require a lot of work. Um, but, you know, maybe, you know, I would really, really like to in 2014 develop a team and make Pinterest oh so Pinteresting um, or maybe the next iteration of oh so Pinteresting be more of a team approach and, and, and really be a bigger presence and beyond just me. Um, so, so we'll see where that goes. Cool. So how do you, how do you unwind and relax? If you've stopped the paper crafting, you stopped the baking, what, what do you do to unwind? 
to unwind. Um, really, it's it's spend time with my family. Um, it, it's hang out with my husband and, you know, just enjoy the quiet time. Or, you know, there's times where I just, you know, I'm looking at my computer screen and I know I have something to write. And I know I have a blog post due, you know, and, and who's it due by? I'm my boss. I say it's due by eight o'clock Friday morning. And you know what? Sometimes I just have to look at the boss and say, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go do this instead. And I'm going to go out to dinner with my family or, you know, I'm going to feed the children or, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go watch. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to go watch a movie with my husband or we're going to go out for a drink and. I'm not going to look at this all weekend. I'm going to just be with, you know, and be who I want to be and do what I want to do. And, you know, sometimes that ends up just, you know, doing laundry um, or things like that. But it's, you know, I have to sometimes say, okay, enough's enough. You need to step away and do this or just, you know, kind of relax and and, and take some of the pressure off myself. I, I put a lot of yeah. pressure on myself over the last year. And, and today, um, you know, today's blog post didn't go out at eight in the morning. It went out by 1130. And does it make that big of a difference? I don't think so. But it took a lot of the pressure off of me, took a lot of the stress away. Um, but, I, you know, I still I still got my blog post out today. What was the last movie you saw? The last movie I saw? Oh, goodness. Um, I saw quite a few over the summer with my kids. Uh, but what was the last one? Well, the last time I went to the movie theater was just actually over, I guess, the week of Thanksgiving. But we went to go see the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special. So it's not technically a movie, but we went to the theater to watch that in 3D. Awesome. Are you a Doctor Who fan? Or did you get drugged to that one? Oh, no. I, I like the Doctor. Yeah, No, it's actually <laughs> me that sought it out and bought the tickets. So <laughs> Nice. Nice. I, I never got into never got into that show. There's a lot of... I'm a big sci-fi fan uh firefly farscape some of those things but i never quite got into to doctor who for some reason yeah yeah we're a big sci-fi family and that's that's the way our family bonds that's the one thing that all six of us have in common we all enjoy sci-fi do you have a favorite sci-fi show or would that be doctor who um actually it would go a little bit deeper than that and i would say i like torchwood better that's the one on stars right uh, no, Torchwood, uh, well, yeah, they did have a series, yeah, there on Stars, and it was, like, kind of one season of Torchwood, but it, there was, like, four seasons, I think, before that, um, and it's, it's kind yeah, of it a spin-off spin of Doctor Who. Yeah, I, it, it looked interesting. Theirs was the, the miracle day. It was, yeah, like, nobody it, died for yep. 24 hours or something. Exactly. That looked really cool, but. Yeah, exactly, miracle day, and, yeah, but I, I enjoy watching Captain Jack, and actually, right now, um, I am looking <laughs> at Captain Jack. I have an action figure of Captain Jack on my desk, and he watches over as I work to make sure I get things done the right way. Um, <laughs> nice. And, yeah, my kids got that for me for Christmas a couple of years back. <laughs> Wow. Uh, instead of uh, New Media Expo, you might be on the, the next panel at Comic-Con. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I, I'm i a huge... Did you ever watch Firefly? You know, I watched... I, I tried to. I watched the first couple of... I, we wanted to start it from the beginning. So I watched the first couple of episodes, and I just never got it. And I know sometimes, you know, when you go with this really long-running series, you have to kind of get past the first you know season or so or mm -hmm. at least the first couple of episodes and i haven't just haven't had much time to dedicate to it yeah firefly that would that would be awesome so if if anyone has a connection to nathan philly and and you're listening to this uh send me an email i would love to have him or anyone from that show on <laughs> on the podcast i'm, I'm a huge sci-fi fan and that was well i know somebody who's oh, met great. him and has taken a picture with him hmm interesting you'll have to make that Make that connection because I watch his show Castle. Yeah. And I shouldn't say this, but I have sort of a man crush <laughs> on Nathan Fillion. So <laughs> I think, <laughs> anyway. So it's completely my, my understandable. Fight... Completely understandable. <laughs> Good. Maybe, maybe I'm not the only one. If, uh, if you have a man crush on Nathan Fillion too, maybe, maybe tag empowered Ellery and hashtag man crush with <laughs> Fillion. So. And maybe, so I know I'm not the only one. Cynthia, what is one tip or piece of advice that you can give people like me who are just starting out? Um, really, just just stick with it. Just just keep on going. Don't don't let those little voices in your head, the same little voices that said that you know you you, you weren't cute enough to you know ask that person out in high school and you know or you know to ask her to the dance or, or whatever. That's the same silly little voices in your head that still seem to perk up. Just try not to listen to them so much. You know if. 
if, if you're not going to cause permanent damage to your health, your, your, you know, your finances or, you know, your, your relationships with your family, then, then just keep, keep it up. Awesome. Cynthia, if someone wanted to connect with you online, where would they go and do that? The best place would be at ohsopinteresting.com. Excellent. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Cynthia, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and uh, look forward to seeing you again in Las Vegas. Thanks so much. And we'll be seeing you soon. And obviously this interview took place before New Media Expo because I've talked about it about two dozen times since um, since we got back from Las Vegas. So um, a couple other things that we talked about, you know, the, I've actually been not at my previous corporate job for almost a month now. So things are definitely changed uh, for me in that regard. Also, if you are a Nathan Fillion fan or a Firefly fan, you'll be happy to know that Ashley and I are on, I think, episode 10 or 11 out of the 14 that were ever recorded. We're watching them. Well, I'm watching them for about the fifth time. And uh, if you want to send me a tweet with hashtag man crush, Ashley made sure to remind me of that. Wouldn't let me <laughs> wouldn't let me forget about that one. So I'd love to hear from you and we can talk about Firefly or Castle or anything else. And this episode of the Empowered Podcast was brought to you by whatsnextblogging.com. If you're like me and you're pretty eager to start your blog and get it off the ground, but you didn't really know exactly what you were doing. Um, you know, I got a few posts, a few pages published, and I wasn't really sure what to do next. I didn't know how to set up an email subscription form, for example, or set up Google Analytics to know where people were coming from. And I certainly didn't know how to do anything other than the just very basic things. And that's where what's next, what's next blogging comes in to help with specific tutorials for specific problems what's next blogging will walk you step by step through the process of taking control of your content and helping you create the blog or the website that you want to create so if you are looking for blogging tutorials i highly recommend you check out the sponsor what's next blogging.com if you go to what's next blogging.com slash free you can get a customized free video thanks for sticking around Here's a taste of what's coming up on our next episode. I accept that it's not going to be easy and just do it anyway. And just like the famous Ford quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> <laughs>